Okay, so now we're going into the trenches. This is a topic that I expect to be met with a lot of pushback, especially if you're 50 years or older. I expect pushback because the mind control on this subject is very strong. The Matrix, which has been discussed in two other videos, is a very powerful weapon used by our enemy. It keeps many asleep living in a dream world that they believe is reality. It makes them believe they have more power than they actually do. It keeps them from living through the true power that our creator has given us and keeps us sedated and defenseless against our enemy. As a recap, in the first Matrix video, I explained that the Matrix is a world that has been made to purposely deceive you, while at the same time it influences you to contribute satanic energy to help establish a new world order. If you don't understand this point, please stop watching this video and go back and review the first video on this topic. In order to fully understand the matrix, it comes through the peeling of layers. In the last video that was discussed on the matrix, we discussed following the money. This is that next layer of the onion that must be understood. Like I said in that video, if you follow the money, then the control aspects of this world become much more clear to you. From this breakdown, we saw that whoever controls the money controls the nation. And we found that all the debt that has been accumulated over the century around the world is held by a few unknown bankers that control the economic foundation of the world. So when you understand this, you understand that the world system could never be fair. It's controlled by a small amount of wealthy families that dictate their will on the rest of the world. But again, if you do not understand this point, please stop watching this video and go back and review that video as well. But in regards to breaking out the matrix, we haven't gone very far in peeling this onion, except understanding what the matrix is and who controls it and how they do this. They were able to create this massive mind game known as the matrix through their control of money, but they could not just stop there. They needed to have a mental buy-in from the majority of the world population in order for their new world to be built. So after they seize control through money, they grab power in other areas of society. Now, it was hard deciding what the next layer of this onion needed to be peeled off because the next two layers are equally effective. They are our education system and our political system. And though our education system probably is the next biggest layer to break down, when looking at the world in real time today, we can see that the political system is a current mental game that they are pushing hard. Because they already have people in such a mental headlock, they have slowed down with the education piece and let people do whatever they feel at this time. But they are still aggressively pushing the political point of their agenda. And so this is what I have been led to break down. Now, let me give this disclaimer. This is a topic that you have been conditioned to really think only one way about. And so I understand if you disagree. This agreement is okay, and it is healthy when it is done with respect. So all that I ask is that if you disagree, you do it with respect and allow the opportunity for healthy dialogue. Breaking up the matrix is not an easy task. The matrix is a prison, but it's not a physical one. It's a prison for your mind, which makes it more dangerous than a physical prison can ever be. What makes a mental prison worse is first that you don't even know that you're there. You don't know that prison exists, which makes it harder to escape from. Another problem is once you feel that you have freed yourself, freed your mind, you often find that you have just freed yourself from a corridor of the prison and you still have a ways to go to really break out. But you must break out, and that is the goal of this video. So if you allow me, let me help you. Let's begin. Okay, so where should we start? Well, let's first label what the mind-controlled aspect is. It's not so simple as just labeling it as voting. The mind control really starts when we look at what the full system is. It's summed up by one word, democracy. What is a democracy? The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines it as government by the people rule of the majority or government in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation usually involving periodically held free elections so democracy is a government that is run by the people take gotham from the corrupt <laughs> the rich the oppressors of generations who have kept you down with myths of opportunity and we give it back to you the people 
And this is the actual mind control. Those that really run this world need the majority population to believe that they are really in control collectively and that the way that they exercise their power is by voting. That is the mind control. Now, before we examine why that is mind control, let's go back and look at the world before this mind control way of thinking began. So let's go back in time to the world before this mental barrier of democracy really took hold. Now, a democracy is not new. Democracy can be traced back to ancient Greece in the 5th century BC. But I don't want to go too deep into that, just saying that the idea is not a new one. The difference where I want to explain is where the power normally was. In the ancient world, during the times of the Bible, power was held in the hands of a small few. They were kings, queens, and emperors. This was a government run by an absolute power, what we would call a monarchy. Power was able to be seen clearly as to who was in control and who yielded that control. An absolute ruler may be accepted because the people believe or accept the idea that God gave him or her the right to rule. This belief is known as divine right, which often has been associated with a monarchy, a form of government in which the power of the king or queen is hereditary. What I am explaining is that this was the most common form of government that the world has known. I won't go too deep, but there have been those that have been given a right to rule by the god of this world, little g, in order to move the world towards this new world order that they have been desiring ever since the fall of the first Babylon. These are those that have bore the mark of Cain, but that's another subject. The point is that this was the most known form of government. It was a seen hand of control rather than the unseen hand that we have today, but I don't want to go ahead of myself. This was the form of government we see all throughout the times of the Bible, especially during the times of the New Testament, when Yeshua walked the earth. The known world was run under the run of Caesar, the emperor. You see, we were subject to the rule of these earthly leaders, but we were never supposed to give our hearts to them. Our hearts always belonged to Yahweh, our creator. Like Yeshua said in Mark chapter 12, when the Pharisees tried to catch him up, he said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Elohim, the things that are Elohim's. And they marveled at him. Mark chapter 12, verse 17. But that's what the people of the world knew. A government run by a small chosen few. But let's not linger on that. Let's go back to the matrix. What is it again? It's a world that has been made to purposely deceive you. While at the same time, it influences you to contribute satanic energy to help establish a new world order. In order for this new world order to be implemented, it cannot come by force. You see, the devil is not trying to be like the Most High by force, but by strategically turning the world's hearts over to him and his ways. A big part of implementing this had to come with empowering the people. He gave them the illusion of power so that they felt that they had control. You see, if the world felt that they were being pushed into this new world order, they would rebel against it and this prophecy would not be fulfilled. In his power grab on the people, the Satan created a system in which the people felt that they had a say, that their voice matters, and that through exercising their voice, they are able to create the world that they want. When you think about the manipulation, the scheme is actually very well played. You don't force people with a hard hand or violence to submit to your will, but you give them a voice, some stake in the game, and make them feel a part of the system. Then they will actively care for it. And that is what the agenda or scheme is that has been carried out in this matrix. Give people a feeling of control and then lead them into making the decisions that you want them to make. What I find ironic and manipulative is that while the devil is using this soft approach and bringing the masses into this new world, he used a heavy, hard hand when he infiltrated the church and started spreading his version of Christianity around the world through the Holy Roman Empire. He used Elohim's word in a get down, lay down approach making people submit to the Bible through fear and coercion that had very negative effects on the church over world history. So in this peeling back of the onion of the matrix, we see that in order to create this new world order, Satan and his minions have given the illusion of rule and power to the people in which the people feel that they are building this new world order themselves and were not coerced by an ultimate power. So we are taught that in order to change the world that we live in, we are to do it by exercising our voices, and we are taught that our voice is our vote that we cast. 
And this is the mind control that we see that was embedded in the American society, definitely from the oldest generation, the Great Depression babies, and their children, who we know as the baby boomer generation. They have been overly programmed to believe in this system. Now, before I get into easily identifiable reasons why you can see that we should not believe in the lie of this democracy, because the truth is, we are in fact in an oligarchy, which is ruled by a few elites whose right to rule is based on possession of wealth, social status, military position, or achievement. This is the unseen hand, but I won't get into that yet. Let me just cover why this democracy is not ordained by Elohim. Now, don't get me wrong. This system that they created comes with benefits that we are able to use. Like, without this system, videos like this wouldn't be able to even exist. Try to make content in China that speaks against the Chinese government and see where that lands you. There is a freedom to do certain things that doesn't exist in those other forms of government that has taken the power out of the hands of the people. But this comes with a double-edged sword because the same laws that are used to promote our rights are the same laws that are used to change what is accepted in this world and bring about more liberal agendas that were never accepted. You see, the purpose of democracy is not simply putting the power in people's hands and giving them freedom. It's actually about taking the power out of Yah's hand, our creator, and giving the people the freedom to create the world that they want. Don't ever lose sight of this. We were created to live under the dominion of our creator. This is his world. This is something that we have lost sight of. Today, we have all these purposes and agendas, creating a world that has nothing to do with him to bring about his righteousness. The minute people started feeling that they had power in this world to bring about the change they needed, we instantly started to move away from our creator. It's deception, and precisely how we see in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, that Satan deceives the whole world. In order to create his new world, where he is worshipped as the Most High, he had to deceive the world in taking away the power of Elohim and placing the collective will of the people over the Most Highs. We can see that this is not what our Father ever intends for his people. He does not want us moving to our own will, but living for his, building his kingdom. If you just go back in the Old Testament, the 1 Samuel chapter 8, I covered this in part 4 of the History of Religion series. Yahweh intended to be the only king that reigned over Israel, but they rejected him and wanted to be like the other nations and have a king who reigned over them and judged them. The Most High said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Now therefore, heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 7 through 9. And if you read the Old Testament, it went downhill from Israel after that point. And Elohim warned them of this. He never intended on us to create the perfect world with justice and equality. You will not find it anywhere in the Bible where he gave us the charge to create a world based on our own will and desires. We are to be led by his spirit and do his will. But we are still subject to the laws of the land. But in no way are we to try to help shape these laws. We preach the gospel. We're not lawmakers. We need to live through biblical perspectives. It doesn't make sense for there to be all these self-proclaimed Christians in the world that feel that they are helping creating a better world through the power of their vote. Let me ask you, how's that worked out for us so far? Now, I do get the deception, because in the past, the world was quite different, and evil wasn't so easily discerned as it is today in these last days. So the older generations truly believed they were voting for what they believed were Christian principles, and it was their job to vote against evil. But here's the thing that they didn't understand. You are not going to stop evil by conforming to Satan's world. You only will stop it or slow it down when rejecting his world and his ways. If the church had have collectively separated themselves from the world and not participated, be holy, be set apart, and they live solely through the word, then evil would not have been so easy to prevail in the way that it has over the decades. You see, we are fighting fire with fire. Trying to fight Satan using his own tactics and schemes, unknowingly racing us toward the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, and then also being on the wrong side of it. That's a bad equation. 
This is why Bible prophecy is something that was not taught strong in the churches. Because if the book of Revelation was taught and the understanding was lived through, there would be an understanding that no matter what, this world will be racing towards evil. And the church's only role is to be the light of the world, showing how to not be a part of the judgment that is coming. But instead, the church joined the politics of this world and attached itself to the direction of this world. And it's actively assisting with steering the world towards a new world order. And that is true whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, conservative or Labor Party, etc., etc. What does the word say? Something that I continuously repeat throughout these videos. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. If we were applying this scripture, we would not be conforming to this world and its patterns. You see, by participating in its democracy, we are only helping steer the world towards the new world order, where Satan tries to be like the most high. The problem I'm sure most people have with this thought is, so what are we supposed to do? Just let people walk over us and bring us down? People like this have a problem with this understanding because they have too much belief in their own control. This is something that you need to deal with now before it's too late. I'm talking to believers. Those that do not believe in the word of Elohim, those that do not believe in redemption only through Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, these people will not understand the concept of submission to the will of the Most High. But if you are a believer, this should not be a new thought. It should be a way of life that you're trying to get better at day by day. Those that believe that they have to do something and that's why they vote, need to really evaluate their relationship with the Most High. He did not place the power to vote in your hands to bring about his kingdom. He gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit to do this. This gift allows you to always walk with him and be comforted by him no matter what comes your way, so that your life is always dedicated to him and his purpose, not dedicated to this world that you want to see that is only there because you are being manipulated and that the mind control content is steering you in this way, not to getting rid of the injustices you are tired of seeing and being affected by. This is not your world to shape. Again, this is not your world to shape. And you being a part of the system, voting in it, only helps Satan. When you're attaching yourself to this political system, you're attaching your heart to the system and hoping for man to bring about change. Like when people voted in Obama, I remember people crying literally on their knees while he told the world, change has come to America. But it was not the change that everyone expected. Donald Trump also came with the same message of change and draining the swamp, and the world is more divided and polarized than ever before. Now I'm sure, for many of you, as soon as I said Obama and Trump, what you want to do is place blame on the other party. Well, the Republicans blocked everything Obama did, and the Democrats opposed everything Trump tried to do. That is the normal thought process. But the fact is that these people are leading the world exactly where the Bible has prophesied, and no matter what you did, no matter if you casted your vote or not, we would still be in the same predicament. But because the church has attached itself to the world, look how they use it against us. The Democratic Party, which is the Liberal Party, would not exist today without the black church. It's obviously not everyone, but there is a strong majority of Democrats that come from the black church, and that's because they use racial issues and economic inequality against us. So they use the black church to promote the agendas and the legitimacy of the Democratic Party. Every election, that's when you see them come into the churches. And these pastors actually let them in, completely being played. A Christian Democrat is literally the biggest oxymoron we can see because the Democratic Party pushes a liberal agenda that is completely unbiblical and goes against the beliefs that the black church says that they believe in. But because they have placed their racial justice and economic equality agendas above serving the Most High, they are being used to help bring about Satan's agenda while professing to be serving our father. Or on the Republican side, because they are aligning with Trump and all that goes along with him, they are making conservative values be something that needs to go away. That seems radical. By making certain biblical values political, because Trump represents the Republican Party, when he goes down, so will the last stand of biblical values go as well. All this because people are tying themselves into a political system that is not actually made for their benefit. And I should also mention the racism that really exists in the Republican Party as well. Many other self-proclaimed Christians just turn a blind eye to it, which doesn't help it as well. There is so much I can say to this point, 
Because in reality, you do not need to go into the mechanics of the political system to understand why we should not be a part of it. The mind control of this matrix is all about creating a world where Satan's ways and values are followed by the world. And this lie of democracy is a strong tool that is used to bring this goal about. Again, the purpose of democracy is not simply putting the power in people's hands and giving them freedom. It's actually about taking the power out of Yah's hand, our creator, and giving the people the freedom to create the world that they want. Now, if you really want to go deep, very briefly we can. Because when really understanding the system, if you want to look at the reality away from the matrix, your vote doesn't really count anyway. I mean, that's easily seen by the last election between Hillary and Donald, where Hillary won the popular vote, but Trump won the election. The Electoral College actually decides who wins, and they can go away from the vote of the people. When Americans cast their votes for president, they are in reality directing other people, called electors, to vote for the candidate who receives the most votes in their state. The political party of the winning candidate in each state then sends its pre-selected electors to the state capitol to vote. But these electors can vote contrary to what the state's popular vote was. There were seven electors who voted contrary to their state's popular vote for president in 2016. This is the most we see do this since 1972. So no matter what, your vote didn't matter. Someone else is in charge of doing something with the vote that you cast. But okay, maybe you don't agree with that. Let's say that your vote did matter. You should then understand you are only given candidates that the system has chosen as acceptable and are controllable. The unseen hand controls nations through money. So it doesn't matter who sits in office because whoever controls the monetary system actually controls the country. These candidates share a secret bond that we do not know much about. It's like the bush Kerry election in 2004. Both candidates are part of the same secret Skull and Bone Society, which the majority know nothing of. You were both in Skull and Bone, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go watch. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322? Two, two. <laughs> <laughs> you both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322? A secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing... Though they were on opposing sides, they still had a secret collective bond the public knew nothing about. That should be alarming. Secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but... Or how about the fact that many presidents are Freemasons? We publicly know that at least one-third of the United States presidents were Freemasons. And according to Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, Freemasonry is an organization that is charged with spreading the light of Lucifer. Or how about the fact that many of the presidents are related? I mean, what's the odds that the first black president of the United States was related to the president he was replacing? It should be extremely low. But if you actually understand this country, you would know that the odds were actually very high. Okay, so maybe you're just really a doubter and you don't believe that as well. So now let's just leave out that the candidates put in place were not selected. And this next reason is why I do not vote in any elections, not just national elections, but the state and local ones as well. What elected officials really do is decide where the flow of money goes. This power is not just given over to people that will completely cross and work against the overall agenda of the world. And if it is, those people get squashed. The fact is that because of money, it will never be fair. Lobbying, no matter what, creates an unfair advantage so that no matter what agendas get pushed, because of the money that is behind the scenes. What is lobbying? That is when you seek to influence a politician or public official on an issue. And this is a common practice in our political system. If you go back to the first video about breaking out the matrix, when we say follow the money, you can see that no matter what, there are agendas that are being manipulated behind the scenes. No matter what you vote for, there is money that is being spent in the background behind the scenes that is not spoken of. And this money behind the scenes really holds more control than your vote. What I often hear people say is that they are voting for the lesser evil. Now, that is the most dangerous thought you could ever have. First, who is determining who and what is the lesser evil? And what biblical belief tells you that this is what our Father in Heaven desires us to do? If you know that you have to choose between two different evils, why are you choosing? Don't pick any of them at all. Do you think that you will say to father, yeah, I picked evil, 
but it was for something less evil. He doesn't want you choosing evil at all. And if you know that you have to do this, you should not be engaging in this. The purpose of getting everyone involved in the political system is not actually about giving power to the people. It's about steering the hearts and minds of the population and making them feel that they have a stake in the world that is being created. When you vote, all you are doing is checking off a box that their mind control is working. In the end, it does not matter who you vote for because their agenda will go through no matter what. You cannot slow it down by engaging in their system. You slow it down by relying on the power of our creator that works through you through his Holy Spirit. At this point in time, the politics of this world are being used to drive us toward this new world order. As a believer, if you are truly one in your heart and not by a title, you need to choose the ways of our Father. If you believe the Bible, then live by it. Don't be a believer that says they believe, but their actions don't match this belief at all. He has clearly told us in his word where this world is headed. Your vote will not change this. Again, you cannot vote away Bible prophecy. You must keep your hearts and minds pure, and you can only do this when you do not participate, because no matter what, the minute you engage, they are grabbing you in. Listen, if you have been voting for the majority of your life, examine the world since you started voting until now. Has the world gotten better or worse? What do you have to lose? The politics of today is not just promoting political agendas, but it's clearly seen that it's provoking civil war. A civil war is brewing because of our polarizing politics. Both Obama and Trump agree on one thing. They both say, if the election is not won for their party, there will be an apocalypse, which means no matter what, we are going to have a problem. There's nothing you can do about this except staying clear away from this and protecting your heart, your mind, and your soul from being manipulated by this matrix. In trying to create a better world, you are working against our creator and strengthening the new world order, which has no place for our creator, and that's why we see more and more policies moving to be on the opposite side of him. You must be smart and vigilant today. The devil is out on a full court press and everything that you think makes sense is pretty much wrong and places you in opposition to the God you are saying you are serving. Put down your ballots and pick up your Bibles. Stop listening to the rhetoric trying to figure out what side you're on. Forget about all these political agendas. There is only one agenda and that is moving the world towards the minion of Satan and your only option as a believer is to not be a part of it. In the end, I know that this message will be hard to receive, especially since people have been conditioned all their life to believe in the power of their vote. And starting right now, there will be a lot of programming that will promote to you that you have a say and that your vote means something. So like always, it's really up to you to make your decision on what you believe and who you will serve. Take it up in prayer and submit to Elohim's voice. Whatever you do, please make sure you know what you're doing. In these last days, it's important to me to keep my sanity and my mind and heart purely for our Father, and that's what I will continue to do. I hope that you'll do it along with me. Because if it seems evil to you to serve Yahweh, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. I truly hope you choose the same as well. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. I really would like to give a special thank you and shout out to those who have donated and continue to support this ministry. I'm so thankful for the love of our Father, and I thank you for your obedience to his call on your heart. I'm always humbled by your support, and I'm very thankful for you. You know who you are. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Make our Creator, the Most High, the priority right now. Be ready and be blessed. I love you all.